Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install an awesome retro-inspired terminal interface on your Raspberry Pi. This is known as Cool Retro Term by Swordfish90 over on GitHub, and it's really easy to install on pretty much any Linux distribution, even the Raspberry Pi. So if you're not familiar with Terminal, we'll just take a quick look here. Uh, very basic, plain Jane, get you by, does everything you need, nothing fancy. You can modify the colors here. We can go to edit, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, and that's about it. I mean, it works for what it's intended for, but we can get a much better looking one. We'll go up here, system tools, cool retro term. And as you can see, we have a totally different retro interface here, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. So I'll go with NeoFetch here. And yeah, I mean, it gives us a fallout look, but this can be totally customized. So if I right click settings, I'm going to move this over to the left hand side a little bit. There's a bunch of defaults here. So the default when you first boot it up is Amber. I think it looks pretty good. Monochrome green, green scan lines, default pixelated, Apple II, you get that curvature going on. This one looks really nice. And if you want to modify one of these profiles, it's pretty easy. You can go up to the terminal section here. You can set up the scaling. You can set it for scan lines. Default makes it look a little different. We have some pixels. So each one looks like a little pixel. Personally, I prefer the scan lines with the Apple II. Effects. You can turn up the bloom, the burn in, the static noise. We'll go up with the static noise. It's just really cool. I mean, there is a ton of stuff that you can mess around with here. And we also have an advance. Affects FPS, sitting at 20. And this does affect performance on the Raspberry Pi. I mean, it's pretty GPU intensive for a little terminal application. But it does add some awesomeness to the plain Jane terminal itself. So if you're interested in getting this up and running, it's pretty easy to do. And I'm going to show you how right now. So I'm running Raspberry Pi OS, previously known as Raspbian, so we're going to need to do this for Debian. And if you're using a different operating system that's based on Debian, this is also going to work. I'm pretty sure this would work with Ubuntu also, because there are instructions in here for Ubuntu operating systems. Links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description, and I do want to give a big shout out to Swordfish90 for doing this. This is absolutely amazing. So what we're going to do is head over to the GitHub link in the description. We're going to scroll down, and like I mentioned, we're on Debian. We have an install tutorial here, but basically the first thing we need to do is install the dependencies. From the dependency section, we're going to scroll down, and if you're using Ubuntu, choose one of these. But we're using Debian, so we're just going to copy all this. There's a lot of dependencies to install. We're going to paste it right into the normal terminal. This part will take about two minutes if you don't have all of them installed already. Now we need to scroll down a little bit more, and we're going to find the compile section. So the first thing we need to do is get the clone for retro term. The next thing we need to do is CD into that location. Now we need to compile. So we're going to QMake and and make. We're going to let this finish compiling. It took about four minutes to do the first time. And now we need to sudo make install. And that's it. We can head up here to our drop down menu, system tools, cool retro term. And it's installed, ready to go. Just right click for your settings and you can go through all of the presets or you can kind of configure your own. It's really up to you. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I would have put all of the commands on screen, but a lot of them are way too long to even fit. Your best bet is just to head over to the GitHub link in the description and copy and paste. The only thing that's not listed there is the last step, sudo make install. Like I said, it's a bit useless because we already have a good terminal built into the Raspberry Pi, but it still makes it look really cool. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Raspberry Pi 4, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.